So in this part, we're going to get our home page set up. That's basically just going to list all of the links that we have stored in our database for each page. So we already have this example page here, but let's go ahead and create another one just so we can see this uh, a little better. So I'm going to create a second page just here and we can go ahead and add a title and a body as well. We'll just write second page in here to be a little bit quicker. We'll do the same for the slug as well. So second page and created that has already been added for us. But again, you can use the now function uh, if it hasn't. So what we now need to do is inside of our index.php file, we need to create a query that's going to pull all of the pages from our database table. So I'm going to create a variable called pages and I'm going to use that database object we have stored in start.php, which remember we're including in here. I'm going to use the query method. So inside of here we have a string and I'm going to pull this down so I can do it on uh, multiple lines. And we're going to use select to select the columns that we want to pull back. Now I want back the ID, the label and the slug. And now we're going to pull that from the pages table. And that is it. That's our query that's going to pull in all of our pages. Now, this won't actually give you all of your pages just yet. We need to use a method called fetch all, which is going to allow us to fetch all of the records that result from this query. And now we need to choose the type we want to pull this back as. So I'm going to choose uh, an associative array. So I use PDO and then we have this static fetch ASOC, which means associative. So how do we know the contents of this variable now? Well, we can use var dump to give us a rough idea. So if I say var dump pages, this is going to give us an output of everything uh, within that. So it looks a little bit messy. Uh, we can go ahead and just view the page source to make that look a little bit nicer. And you can see here we have an array with two items in it. The first you can see contains the ID, which is one, the label and the slug. And the second array has ID, label and slug for the second page. So we've got an array now of uh, both of our pages. And obviously if we add more pages, we would have more here as well. So we don't want to do that. Instead, what we want to do is we want to kind of pass this to a new file where we can output it to the user. Of course, what we could do is down here, we could start writing up our uh, document, but that's uh, a little bit messy. We want to keep things nice and tidy. So I need to require in a view. We haven't created a view yet for our home page, So we can go ahead and do that now. So if I go ahead and create a new file in here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna call that home.php and inside of here let's just for now write home and we want to include this just in here now we don't know the path to our views file well we kind of do because our app root which remember represents this folder here is stored as app root as a global but wouldn't it be a lot better if down here we could define our view root so let's do this now we're going to say view root and we're going to assign this the value app root and then we're going to append on forward slash views. So all this is going to do is it's going to mean the path to this app folder here, but then inside of views. And we know that home.php is inside there. So what we can do on the home page then is we can go ahead and require this in. So let's require view root forward slash home.php. So now when we refresh, we see home. And what we can do is we can use this pages variable within this file here to go ahead and output everything we need. Now, the one thing we haven't set up is the template for our site. We already have the CSS file, which you should have downloaded or copied over earlier, but we don't have a, a, an efficient enough way to go ahead and avoid duplication of our uh, markup. 
So let's first of all just build up a page within this home.php file. Now I'm auto generating this document layout, but you can go ahead and just copy this down as it is. You'll only need to write this one because we're going to break it up into a header and a footer and then include that on every page. So for the title, I'm going to change this to my CMS and inside of the body, we're not going to put anything just yet because we're going to break down this file. So let's create a new folder inside of our views folder and let's call this templates. So I'm going to cut the top part of this like so and I'm going to create a new file in templates and I'm going to call this header.php. I'm going to paste that in. So let's close that off for now. I'm going to grab the bottom part of this and inside of templates, I'm going to create footer.php, paste that in and then close that off. So now inside of home, what do we do? Well, all we need to do here is require in view root and then you've probably guessed templates header.php and we can duplicate this down and include the footer. So now whatever we write inside of here will be wrapped around that header and footer. So let's just view the page source and there we go. So you can see we've got the head, the content and then the footer. So we still need to make it look pretty. So we're going to go ahead and adjust the header to pull in our style sheet. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to generate this automatically, but it's a link element with a rel attribute of style sheet. The href is just the location of the style sheet. Now to make this uh, actually work across all the pages that we're going to build, we need to include our base URL. Remember we uh, defined our base URL here. So all we need to do then is in PHP tags, we need to echo out base URL and we can append on, uh, we don't really need to append this here actually, we can just do a forward slash CSS app.css. So all that's doing then is it's outputting the base URL and then we're doing forward slash CSS app.css. When we refresh, you don't see much change. We've got a font change and the background color change. When we view the page source, you can see that that's generated the full URL to that style sheet. So we're nearly there. All we need to do now is utilize this wrapper class that's within our uh, CSS file. So down here, I'm going to create a div with a class of wrapper. And I'm going to create a header here saying my CMS. And this will be on every page, but you can modify this. So we need to end this div tag and that ends in the footer. So down here, we can just add that in. And all that means now is that when we refresh, we see the following. So when I view the page source here, we can see that we get our header with the start of our wrapper. We have our header here, home, which is our text we added to that view. And then the footer is normal. So there we are. Let's go ahead and output these pages to this home page. So inside of here, then I'm going to go ahead and first of all, check whether there are actually pages available. So if we don't have any pages uh, on the home page, we want to show a message. But how do we know from here if we don't have any pages? Well, if there aren't any pages, if nothing's returned from this query, the array will be empty. So what we can do here is we can say if empty pages. We can come and open and close another PHP tag and say else. And then down here we can end our if statement. Now I'm using uh, PHP's kind of templating language if you like here where I'm opening and closing a PHP tag for each of these lines. But feel free to do this however you want. Ordinarily you'd use a, a pre-built templating engine but for now, we're just focusing on raw PHP. So it does look a little bit messier than you would normally find. So if the pages variable is empty, if there are no results in there, we want to say, sorry, no pages at the moment. Now, otherwise in here, we want to go ahead and loop through all of our pages. And I'm going to do this within an unordered list. So 
we open our PHP tag here and we use a for each loop and this allows us to loop over an array. So we're going to say for each pages and for each of them pages we're going to call that page that allows us to access it and I'm going to go ahead and end the for each just in here. So inside of this loop we want to output a list item and inside of that we want to output uh, a link, so an anchor element. So let's do the uh, label first, which is the easiest part, just inside of here. So we're going to open and close another PHP tag and we're going to output page and then label. So let's preview this and see what we've got. Now we, there you can see we've got first and second page. So we're nearly there. The next thing we want to do is generate the link to the actual page to see the page. But we don't have a file for this just yet. So inside of our root directory, let's create a new file and we'll call this page.php. And inside of here, let's just say page, just so we can click through to it and at least see something. So inside of the href, which is where this link is going to go, we're going to echo out the base URL again. Remember that's uh, the HTTP forward slash forward slash or colon forward slash forward slash and then our URL. And then here we're going to say page.php page equals. So all we're doing here then is we're um, linking to page.php that we've just created. But we're also passing in a value in the query string. This is the query string here uh, from here onwards. And all this means is we can assign a value to a key inside of the query string. So for page, we're going to again echo page slug. So all that will do is when we refresh and we click on first page, that's generated uh, our base URL, page.php, and then the query string we have page equals and then the slug that's stored inside of our database for that. And all this means is that when we come to show this page, we can use this, pick up that value, find the record that it's associated with, and we can go ahead and output that page to the user. So for the home page, then that is pretty much it. We've built the basic templating, we've created a view. We've gone ahead and passed the uh, values to that view by just requiring in the view. And now we're outputting first and second page from our database. So the next step is to actually build the page that shows the page we clicked on.